Hey, what's going on, Shrimp Keepers? It is Shrimp Saturday. I'm actually getting ready to go to a wedding. Um, I went out to eat with uh, the in-laws beforehand, and uh, so I'm actually sitting in the restaurant right now in the, in the bar area. Um, I had some time to kill, so I figured I might as well shoot the video real quick. So today I actually want to talk to you guys about some pests in the aquarium, and I apologize I don't have any tanks to show you as I am out of town this weekend. I'm actually, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm here for a wedding. Um, my wife is actually in the wedding, so I got even more time to kill, so it worked out good. But anyway, so I want to talk to you about some pests in the aquarium, uh, specifically in shrimp tanks, that are really bad for shrimp. And uh, specifically, I want to talk about Hydra and Phenaria. Now granted, there's a lot more pests that do occur in shrimp tanks. Um, not all of them are harmful, and I'll probably do another video on those. But um, mainly Planaria and Hydra, they're, they're both extremely harmful to shrimp tanks and shrimp themselves. And so, uh, first of all, let's talk about um, Planaria. So, you have to know how to identify Planaria. I'll try putting a picture over the video, and uh, we'll see how that works out. I'm really not sure how to do it right now, but hopefully I'll have enough time to figure it out. But uh, Planaria, they're like these little leeches. They're usually about... I want to say a quarter of an inch, um, maybe more. They, I mean, they can range in size. They look like a leaf. And the way that you know they're planaria, because there's, there's a lot of worms that occur in a, in a shrimp tank. But planaria are like, they do look like a leech, and they actually have a triangle head. And so, uh, so that's a telltale sign. Now these guys occur in an aquarium quite regularly. And, uh, and I'll get into what causes them later on in the video. But they basically, like I said, they're about a quarter of an inch um, square head. They actually eat from the center of their body, which is kind of weird. But uh, I remember somebody telling me that, and I thought, wow, that's, that's kind of unique. And then um, Hydra, what are Hydra? So Hydra are actually like, they're like a, a tentacle more or less. So it kind of looks like they have a little stem, and it's extremely small. It's like an eighth of an inch, um, something like that in that area. And then uh, what they do is they actually stem up, so up the quarter of an inch, and they have four tentacles uh, exposing from them, maybe five, maybe six, I don't know, they're hard to see. And uh, these tentacles actually catch baby shrimplets like a, like a hand, and they catch them, and they pull them in, and they consume them, more or less like a Venus flytrap, if you guys are familiar with that. And so, um, so those are the two things in the aquarium. They, once they start, I mean, they spread quick. I had a bug in my shirt. Let me get it out. Okay, so you guys know that I wasn't joking. Check this thing out. Oh, I don't know what it was, but it was crawling on my arm. And it kind of freaked me out, so I had to squish it. So there are pests uh, other than um, shrimp pests. That wasn't a funny joke, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> oh man. But anyway, back on topic. So I think I just got done um, talking about Hydra and explain what they look like. Basically they're just like a Venus fly trap for shrimp. And um, with the with the Planaria, um, back to Planaria, they're the leech looking ones. They, uh, they're not gonna kill adult shrimp. Um, usually shrimp are much faster, but shrimp do sleep or they go into a dormant stage where they're kind of staying still and Planaria will actually sting them. And this sting will actually cause bacterial infections. So, and um, you know, which isn't good. The bacterial infections are hard to treat, and so it's one of those things that planaria and tanks are not good. They're not actually going to physically catch a shrimp and kill it, even though they might. Uh, they have to be really lucky, but they will sting them, and they're just not good to have in a uh, in a shrimp tank, more or less. And then hydra, hydra is spread in a tank like wildfire. So they, like I said, they go up in a branch and they have these little tentacles on top that they catch things. And so they'll actually branch out off of that and then these branches will swim across the aquarium and uh, they'll attach to whatever they find and uh, that's how they spread and they are, they are detrimental. They will kill baby shrimplets and so breeding and tank will really go down the hill if, uh, if you get those. There's some good music going, I don't know if you guys can hear it. But anyway, what causes these parasites? And uh, the truth is, Overfeeding. Um, if you overfeed, if you have bad water quality, that's when these parasites start coming into play. Um, mainly overfeeding, that's what I found, really cause them. So be careful when you're feeding. That's what I always recommend. Um, feed less. Always feed less. Um, very rarely do you see shrimp starve to death in uh, 
that's because they're finding natural food. So always play on the safe side than feeding more. And so why don't you see these in fish tanks? Um, a lot of us have fish tanks also um, with shrimp tanks. And the truth is all these parasites occur in fish tanks all the time. It's the thing is the fish eat them. And so with shrimp, shrimp can't eat these, these little parasites. So they flourish and uh, they do really well. And so that's why you don't always see them in fish tanks, but you do see them in shrimp tanks. So all these parasites are bad. I hope I can learn how to put pictures in here so you guys can really see what they look like and start to identify them. So the biggest treatment of these is the prevention of them, and that's by not overfeeding. But there is a treatment that does kill these guys, and it's not harmful to the shrimp. And you can get it on Amazon. It's called Panicure C. It's a dog dewormer. And uh, this is what I use in all my tanks. And uh, basically, what you do is you just add a little bit to the top. Um, I order it in a one gram packet, so it's for $10. And each container comes with, uh, I think it's three one gram packets. You add these um, one gram packets to the aquarium. Um, I do 0.1 gram, roughly. You don't have to be precise, 0.1 gram uh, per 10 gallons. And so, you know, a one gram pack will last you 100 gallons. Uh, just simple math and so with that you just add it um, you can dissolve it in water first which is the best method to do it um, with the amount of tanks that I have if I do have to treat um, I, I just pour it on top to be honest and uh, the shrimp will actually pick it up and move it around the aquarium it's not gonna harm them at all they can eat it and it really won't hurt them or hurt them whatsoever um, so don't be worried about overdosing or anything like that. I mean, I wouldn't go crazy at all. Never, never go crazy. But 0.1 gram per 10 gallons is a great way to start. And so what I recommend for treatment, you add in the appropriate amount. Again, this is pain accuracy. I'll put a link down below. Uh, you can get it off Amazon. And so you add it to the aquarium. Um, after two to three days, um, doesn't matter, two or three days, whatever your schedule uh, allows for you do a 20% water change and the reason I say to do a water change isn't because the pain cure C is bad for the shrimp it's because you're having all those dead things in the aquarium the planaria are dying the hydra are dying and so now you got an ammonia spike so you want to prevent that and so do a 20% water change if you're still seeing these little parasites either the hydra or the planaria uh, treat it again and usually after two to three times completely gone the only downside to this is Panicure C also will harm, uh, again, it's a dog dewormer, so anything worm-like is gonna be affected. So snails are actually affected too. And so if you do have snails in your aquarium, one, you can take them out, and that's the safest bet. Um, the other way you can do it is uh, add in smaller doses. And I add 0.1 gram per 10 gallons, and I don't see a huge kill off in snails when I do treat but it does happen. And so, it just depends. Um, you know, if you really love your snails, then I recommend taking them out. But that's what I got for you guys. Um, I'll try to include as many uh, pictures as I can, if I can figure it out. But if not, you know, it is what it is. And I will try to, I got a tank right now. It's a um, 20 gallon long on the planet tank rack, which is uh, automatic filtration, all that kind of stuff. And I just put cherry shrimp on it, just to see how they would do and so far so good but I had a huge planaria outbreak and some hydra not many but tons of planaria and that's just because I overfeed like crazy on that tank because of the fish and so that's what sparked this video and so um so I'm treating it right now so I'll try to get a video out for you guys this coming Wednesday of that tank to kind of show you more or less what I've been talking about but um, I hope this guy this gave you a good um, just kind of introduction to parasites in a shrimp tank and like I said, there's a lot that aren't harmful, and uh, you guys will see that. Um, I'll bring it up in another video, but these are the two you need to watch out for. All the other ones don't really worry about right now because they're not bad. There's there's another one that's kind of bad, but I'll get into that. It's a, I call it a sand crab. I don't know what it's really called. It's a little sand crab, and they are little stinkers. They uh, they destroy shrimp, and so, uh, so I'll try to get a few videos of that kind of stuff. But anyway, I hope you guys are having a great weekend. I'm, I'm ready to go enjoy myself at this wedding. Uh, see some of our friends get married and and uh, just enjoy time with the family and um you know it's all about having fun <laughs> but uh you guys make it a great weekend enjoy yourselves do some fun watch some football um everyone that's not in america you guys uh drop a comment below let me know what you guys do on the weekend soccer i don't, I don't know what's going on right now but uh it's just really cool i've been getting a lot of awesome 
uh, emails and stuff like that from people all around the world and it's so cool to see this this hobby just um, come together under one roof and, and it's just it's unbelievable so you guys have an awesome weekend and I will talk to you guys soon later